Makes no difference, Blaine told him. Once you get going, you are there. Distance seems to be no factor. Maybe when we get way out, we may pick up a lag, halfway across the galaxy. But I doubt it even then. The theoretical boys think not, said Rand. He walked across the office to the massive desk and picked up the bottle that was standing there. He broke the seal and spun the cap. You know, Shep, he said, this is a fantastic business we are in. We tend to take it in our stride, and it becomes at times a bit humdrum to us. But the fantasy is there. Just because it came so late to us, said Blaine. Just because we passed up the ability so long. It was in us all the time, and we never used it, because it wasn't practical. Because it was fantastic. Because we couldn't quite believe it. The ancients grabbed the edge of it, but they didn't understand it. They thought that it was magic. That's what a lot of folks still think, said Rand. He rustled up two glasses and got ice out of the wall refrigerator. He poured out generous helpings. Drink up, he said, handing Blaine a glass. Rand lowered himself into the chair behind the desk. Sit down, he said to Blaine. You aren't in that much of a rush, and you lose something in the drinking when you stay standing up. Blaine sat down. Rand put his feet up on the desk, settled back in comfort. No more than twenty minutes left. And sitting there, with the glass clutched in his hand, in that second of silence before Rand should speak again, it seemed to Blaine once more that he could hear the throbbing of the huge thing that was Fishhook, as if it were one sentient being lying here against the nightmare Mother Earth of northern Mexico, as if it had heart and lungs and many throbbing veins, and it was the throbbing which he heard. Across the desk, Rand crinkled his face into a gracious mask of geniality. You guys have all the fun, he said. I sometimes envy you. It's a job, Blaine told him carelessly. You went out five thousand years today. You got something out of it. I suppose there was some satisfaction, Blaine admitted. The intellectual thrill of knowing where you were. Actually, it was better than the usual run. I think I rustled up some life. Tell me, said Rand. Not a thing to tell. I found this thing when time was running out. I didn't have a chance to do anything at all before I was jerked back home. You've got to do something about that, Kirby. It can get damn embarrassing. Rand shook his head. I'm afraid that's out, he said. You should give us some discretion, Blaine insisted. The time limit should not be so arbitrary. You keep a man out the total length of time, the entire thirty hours, when there is no earthly reason for him staying on. Then you yank him back when he's on the very verge of something. Rand grinned at him. Don't tell me you can't do it, said Blaine. Don't pretend that it's impossible. Fishhook has cords of scientists stacked up in solid rows. Oh, I suppose it's possible, Rand told him. We just like to keep control. Afraid of someone staying? That's possible, said Rand. What for? demanded Blaine. You're not a man out there. You're nothing but a human mind caged in a smart machine. We like it as it is, said Rand. After all, you guys are valuable. We must take safety measures. What if you got into a jam 5,000 years from home? What if something happened and you weren't able to exercise control? We would lose you then. But this way, it's automatic. When we send you out, we know you're coming back. You value us too highly, Blaine told him dryly. Not at all said Rand. Do you realize how much we have invested in you? Do you realize how many men we sift through before we find one that we can use? One who is both a telepath and a rather special kind of teleporter? One who has the mental balance to stand up to the impact of some of the things he finds out there? And finally, one who is capable of loyalty to Fishhook? You buy the loyalty, said Blaine. There is no one of us who ever claimed he was underpaid. That. Rand told him, it is not what I am talking about, and you know it isn't. And you? Blaine asked inaudibly. What are the qualifications for security? Peeping could be one of them. The ability to look into another's mind. But there never been any evidence in all the years he had known Rand that the man actually was a peeper. If he were a peeper, then why should he use men in his department whose sole purpose consisted of their ability to peep? I can't see what all this has to do, said Blaine, with not giving us some time control. We could, and I don't see why you should fret yourself, Rand countered. 
you'll be going back to your precious planet. You can pick up where you left off. Of course I'm going back. I found it, didn't I? That sort of makes it mine. He finished off the drink, put the glass down on the desk. Well, I'm off, he said. Thank you for the drink. Of course, said Rand. Wouldn't think of keeping you. You'll be back tomorrow? Nine o'clock, said Blaine.